Good evening. A fireman once said, fire is the greatest serial killer of all time. And if a fire has begun in your home, it's too late to be asking, what should I do? Did you know that it doesn't matter if your home is a one-room bungalow or a luxury apartment? The risk of death in a fire is the same. And firefighters tell us that to survive, you need to understand the force that is a burning building. That's just what we're going to show you tonight. Jay Shadler takes you inside a home on fire to show you how you and your children can get out alive. Every 16 seconds, somewhere in the United States, there is the sound of panic. And firefighters roll out to battle their old enemy. It is a trickster, sometimes wearing flashes of flames, more often a cloak of black poison. 911, do you have an emergency? Oh my God, there's smoke filling everywhere! Oh, ma'am, is it a fire? Yes! Okay, get everybody out, okay? Smoke was the killer two years ago on Las Olas Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. A front porch fire sucked clouds of smoke into an upstairs hall, trapping two young girls in a back bedroom. Oh, please. Oh, please. Neither their mother's cries nor the heroics of firefighters could save the girls. It was too late for that. Six-year-old Alexandria Eisenberg and her four-year-old sister Nicole died of smoke inhalation. The blackened outline of their bodies, still clutching their stuffed animals, remains on the bedroom floor. The sad truth is those two children should be alive today and playing in this yard. Firefighters found two smoke detectors, one without batteries, the other not working. And two simple safety rules might also have saved the girls' lives. First, they should have been taught an escape route. They would have known to come out the back window onto the roof of the porch. And second, look back through that window. A bedroom door is in the corner. That door should have been shut. It would have kept out the toxic fumes that eventually killed them. Smoke is the real killer. Not many people die from direct fire contact. Most people die from the smoke. It's quiet and it's deadly. Battalion Chief Steve McInerney was on duty the night of the Las Olas fire. Sixteen years of firefighting have taught him that his nemesis plays no favorites. It comes to rich neighborhoods and poor, feeds on almost anything in your home, breathes oxygen, and exhales poison. I think that we're seeing more of that in the country because we have such an increase in plastics and hydrocarbons. Plastics are derivative of petroleum products. And so we reach a much higher temperature inside the ordinary house. Everything is given off a of gas. And as it heats up, then everything bursts into flames like that. And you have complete incineration. And yet the simplest precautions can save a life. Primetime, in cooperation with Fort Lauderdale Fire Rescue, is going to try to help you save yours by showing the pictures no one sees, watching a fire from the inside out. This single-family home was scheduled to be demolished, but instead it's going to burn. Fifteen video cameras have been brought in to record the events. And nine of those cameras we have positioned inside the house, some near the ceiling, some near the floor. If you're escaping a fire, remember this, stay low, because while the temperature at ground level can be more than 100 degrees, if you stand up, at eye level, the temperature can reach 800 degrees. And just a foot above my head, it can be up to 2,000 degrees. We also have a couple of cameras in the kitchen, which, by the way, is where most home fires begin. These two cameras are in a fireproof box with a clear view of the living room where the fire should begin. One smoke detector is placed on the living room wall, another in a backroom nursery. Drapes, furniture, and appliances, including a fan for ventilation, have all been brought in to replicate a typical home. And perhaps like your own home, this one has two bedrooms. You might imagine the parents sleeping in this room. We're going to close the door, see if the fire passes through here. Now, just down the hall, about 12 feet away, is the child's room. This door will leave open. We don't expect the flames to reach here, but as we know, smoke and heat can be just as deadly. 
One other thing to be aware of, Chief McInerney's going to be inside. Crews on the rescue B shift have been brought in to make sure the fire is controlled and neighborhood property protected. And now the trigger for this fire. One of the most common causes, the cigarette dropped in a bed or a couch or in a waste paper basket. And that is how this fire is going to start. And it begins so slowly, so silently, as if the fire knows to wait until you're asleep. This thing has been smoldering for 15, 20 right. minutes now. And, and this smoke is enough here to deaden your senses. I can't believe how much smoke is in there already, and the smoke alarm has yeah. not gone off. They, 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 30 minutes pass while the ashes continue to smolder. 30 minutes of silence from the smoke detectors. But when the change comes, it comes swiftly. In a matter of seconds, smoldering turns to sparks, and sparks become flames. They reach four feet before the smoke detector goes off, even though it's located just six feet from the fire. How far away might yours be? Now, watch the clock. We move into time lapse. In just two and a half minutes from the alarm sound, a thick curtain of black smoke descends through the hall and into the nursery. It'll settle on you like a blanket. You wake up in those blinding, choking seconds, frantic, and if you really don't know what to do, uh, most cases you're gonna become a statistic. Remember the bedroom where we closed the door? That thin barrier is still keeping the room largely free of heat and smoke. While just inches away, it's an inferno. There's no time now for pets or possessions. Forget them. A fire like this is doubling in size every 30 seconds. We have a house on fire at 1126 Northwest 8th Avenue. The first engines arrive on the scene four minutes after the 911 call. That's the average response time for firefighters, but they're already having to play catch up. Steve McInerney and I will join three other firemen in the first team to go inside. Oh boy, it's hot on my back. It's really hot on my back, I can feel it. Oh my God! It's coming right over the top of us. The heat on my back is amazing. If the carpet is on fire, I've got to sleep. I've got to go. I can feel the heat right through my gloves. It's pitch black in here. I can't see anything. The fire is fought in total darkness. We creep along the edge of a side wall toward the back nursery. Where's the crib? Yeah, it's too hot. It's too hot. There is no way a child or adult could make their way through here. Our air tanks will last 20 to 30 minutes, but this fire is controlled in a fraction of that time. And in a sacred ritual among firefighters, the same team that went in together gathers near the door to come out together. I'm exhausted. I was in there for a very short period of time. And we knew where we were going. We knew we were heading back to the back wall, going on the ground, back to the, the nursery. Right. What if you don't know where you're going? The, 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 the seconds are ticking away. Tick, tick. Because we could go straight down. We might think that that bedroom is straight ahead of us. Right. You don't know. The right. fan was destroyed. The phones were destroyed. The couch was destroyed. And yet when we went into the, back into the nursery, yeah. Yeah. the crib was fine. I mean, it, the crib it's was that all smoke. Right. I mean, I think but this, it's, it's black, soot. I mean, you can see it on your face. It's permeated your skin, your hair, it's everywhere. And we were just in there for a matter of minutes. I mean, you could see the helmets were so hot to the touch that even when we came out, you couldn't really touch them with right. a bare hand. Less than an hour later, we return. All right, let's take a look inside here. This is where we crawled, right here. Everything is charred, scorched, or melted. Here's where the phone was over here. Oh, it's gone. It's just Gone. Melted and, and, and fell right off the... Uh... Is it down here? Yeah. Let me see here. Here's the phone. It's not hot anymore. That's what's left of it. There's the phone. You see here is, is what's left of, of the, the waste paper basket. That's right. Here's where it started. And you can, you can see the little pieces of wicker. Yeah, that's all that's left there, isn't it? This is curious, this wall here. What we have... Almost a timeline on the fire in a way, don't we? Exactly. Tell me about that. And, and you can see that the smoke moved back here. It's much blacker here in the back. Right. Because 
the, the smoke is seeking the path of least resistance. And that was an open door. So what happened is that drew the smoke and heat. This is the children's room. Look at this. Now look. Here. You come across the top of the crib. That's what was in the baby's lungs, or would have been. And, and that's the stuff that's quiet and deadly. that just comes down on top of you like a blanket. In the end, the lessons of this fire are both simple and powerful. Smoke detectors, buy and use them. When they sound, know that time is already running against you. Stay low and get out fast. Then call 911. Keep your inside doors closed. And before a fire starts, plan your route of escape. Because when the blanket of smoke descends, you can be lost in your own home. And the only light is deadly and coming your way. We want to thank the city of Fort Lauderdale and Fort Lauderdale Fire Rescue for their help with this story. And before you go to bed tonight, check your smoke detector. Firefighters say up to one-third of all smoke detectors they find during house fires were not working, usually because they were disconnected or had dead batteries.